All right, welcome everybody. This is Bashful to Bold, a, a Bash primer or a tutorial on Bash. Uh, first of all, welcome. Good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever in the world you are and whenever you are watching this. I'm super happy to, be, to have the opportunity to do this as a virtual presentation. While I'd much rather be doing this in person, uh, we're take the opportunity, learn a few new things, learn how to record a video and uh, hopefully have some fun with this. Right? I try to make this as interactive as possible when it's live, uh, but I'll try to make it as entertaining as possible here while it's being recorded. Uh, my goal here for the presentation or the tutorial is that you leave with just a little more knowledge or a little more insight than you came with. That being said, I think it's hard to leave with less insight, but who knows, right? Uh, my name is Alex Wattis and I'm a principal engineer at Rackspace. So getting started with today, our agenda is a couple things, right? So we're gonna start off in a, maybe a non-traditional way, but also delivering this virtually is non-traditional, so it works out. We're gonna start off with a, a bit of breath work, a technique called box breathing. Then we'll go into bash foundations, understanding and level setting the building blocks that we'll need for uh, jumping into our next section, which will be bash scripting. After that, we'll talk about some resources, and then we'll end the session the way we began uh, with a bit of box breathing as well, again. So requirements for this tutorial or this presentation. I try to assume as little knowledge as possible when it comes to these introductory topics. That way we can include as many people, as many experiences, as many uh, knowledge sets, knowledge levels as we can here. If you are just starting out, the hope is that you have uh, a bit more insight and can learn enough to ask better questions. And if your experience level is just maybe higher with more tenure, then I hope that I've maybe introduced something that you haven't seen before or maybe have forgotten about and remind you of that. So my hope is that anybody at any level can get something from this. The script that I'm going to be using in this tutorial can be found on GitHub. Uh, the link is there below. Uh, github.com slash Mr. Alex Wattis slash OSS bash primer. And the nice thing here is that that set of scripts and that, uh, and these slides will be kept there and updated uh, as I decide to add more to the presentation or more to uh, this information. And uh, about this tutorial. So this tutorial is about 75 to 80 ish minutes, somewhere in there of curated content from multiple sources and multiple years of working as a system administrator and as an engineer. Uh, there's no way we're gonna cover everything within this time frame. So my idea, the idea is that I will take the highlights, what's been most useful to me over the years and try and combine them into a short, quick session. After that, the idea is that perhaps you have just a bit more information to go in, ask better questions or do better, do better Google searches. So you have that information um, to kind of build off of. So getting started with box breathing. Now you may be asking yourself, why begin a presentation on Bash with breath work? Uh, and the idea here is that when I initially proposed this presentation, obviously it was gonna be in person, and I had an idea around creating a script. I think one of the best ways to learn something is to have a project or something goal you're trying to achieve. And there would be some, some sort of different script or different goal. Um, but as things began to change, as we learned that this was gonna be virtual, uh, this idea came to mind where uh, to teach a bit of breath work. Uh, as people have been working from home or different locations and things have changed in, in the workplace, uh, the things that we may usually do to de-stress or unwind or take a step back may not be available to all of us. But one thing that's always available to us is our breath, right? It is uh, being able to breathe and breathe in, a, breathe in a controlled fashion. So I wanted to do, introduce the idea of box breathing because for me personally, it's been a tool, a valuable tool to center myself, get my day started, uh, if I find myself in the weeds or I find myself head down, uh, you know, up against the problem, I can take a step back, do a bit of breath, breath work, and then recenter myself. And so uh, for me, it's helped with a lot of anxiety and stress. And, and even according to the Mayo Clinic, 
uh, the, there's some benefits of deep breathing that have been researched in that they could ease the symptoms of, of stress-related disorders such as anxiety, general stress, depression, PTSD, and things like that. Uh, like I said, for me, it's mostly the idea of centering myself and bringing uh, myself present to the work I'm doing. So the steps for box breathing. And like I said, the idea is that we're going to learn this skill, this technique, and then we're going to, the scripts we're going to build are going to be around having a script for ourselves to, to do this. Uh, in the beginning here, I'm going to guide you through the first part of box breathing. And then at the end, we'll have a script that we can run that's going to help us guide through it as well. Okay. So trying to guide you all through uh, this breath work here. If you're not already seated, find a comfortable seat. Find something that is, is comfortable to sit on. Feet on the floor, feet grounded, uh, preferably bare feet. Have your feet touching the ground. Make that connection with your body. The, the steps here are simply we're going to inhale for four seconds. We're going to hold that for four seconds. Exhale for another four, and then hold for another four seconds before going through that cycle again. And so the step here, like I said, find a comfortable seat, feet on the ground. Uh, if you can, lift your chest a little bit and maybe bring your shoulders down your back, right? This is the yoga teacher and me trying to get into the right position here. I invite you to close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. If it's not, that's perfectly okay. And we're gonna get started here with just guiding you through this box breathing. As you inhale for one, two, three, four. Hold that breath for one, two, three, four. Exhale for four, three, two, one. And hold one, two, three, four. We'll do another round as you inhale for one, two, three, four. Holding for one, two, three, four. Exhaling for four, three, two, one. Holding for one, two, three, four. And then our last round as you inhale slowly for one, two, three, four. Holding for one, two, three, four. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Holding for one, two, three, four. And just opening your eyes, taking a few breaths in and out. Inhale and exhale. Kind of shake off any kind of uh, pent up movement you might have. And we get settled down to begin our, our bash learning here. Okay, so jumping into our bash foundations. And we're gonna start at the very beginning here by answering the question, what is bash? And at simplest form, bash the shell for command interpretation. So, so what does that mean? What's a shell? A shell is just a program or a terminal where we type commands in and get a chance to interact with the system. Bash was first released on June 8th of 1989 and actually replaced a, a shell before that called the Born Shell. So Bash is actually a combination of Born Again Shell, which replaced that Born Shell in 89. So again, there's some bit of age on this. It's been around for a long time. And actually, it's been the default shell on a lot of systems for, for quite some time. So I think it's pretty safe to assume that it's going to continue to be one of the default shells, or at least a shell available on system for, for time to come, for a long time to come. So let's start off with what happens when you log in, right? Because uh, when you log on to a system via SSH or at, at the prompt, certain things happen that gives you a, a, a terminal or prompt. And so while much of this is covered over under the invocation part of the man page, I kind of want to go through it and show you what it looks like. So if we have a system here, no, we do not. Actually, let me... There we go, we're on a demo system here. Okay, 
So if we're on system here, so what happens when I logged in there is that the system checked my username, checked my password, and then says, great, those both pass. Uh, let's execute your login shell. In this case, it's bash. Uh, but how do we know that? How do we know we're running bash? How do we know that our login shell is bash? Uh, there are a couple ways we could do that. Uh, so I, when I give presentations, I always like to give kind of auxiliary data or auxiliary commands and information so that it kind of all helps come together. And so in this case here, I can run a command called who am I, will give me my username. In this case, it's root, okay? Now, if I use grep root from Etsy password, okay? Grep being a command, uh, if you're not familiar with it, to essentially search through a file for a specific string and return that string to you. And we see here in this first line here, uh, root, and then the last part, we don't need to know about all of the other fields, but this last part here is, is bin bash. So this tells me that as for the root user, the login shell is gonna be bin bash. Now, maybe bash is alias, or maybe bash is, bash is uh, connected to something else. So let's take a look at that as well. I might say which bash, I can see here user bin bash, and I might say ls-lah for user bin bash. And we see here that it is a, is a file, it's not a symlink, right? So we can pretty be sure that our our default shell here is bash. Now I want to do a couple things here. Um, but kind of begin to expand upon, highlight some of the things we do uh, for, for one-liners for scripting. Earlier I did the command, who am I, right? Gave me root. But let's say I wanted to do this for a lot of different users. I might say uh, grep, who am I, right? Uh, and then Etsy password. And so that this here is essentially executing the command and returning and replacing that uh, that value it came out in that in that variable. So who am I is going to return in who as a root, and then so it's going to be just a uh, just like same like thing we did before. Grep who am I and the password. So you combine those two commands, who am I and then the grep with one command. Okay. Um, also, I might say uh, which I might say uh, ls dash lh and say which bash, right? So if I do a which bash, that gives, that gives me the full path of, of bash, whichever can be called in my path, and we'll get to that in a little bit. And it gives me a, a, a long listing of it so I can see what that looks like at the terminal. Okay. So, so invocation. So what happens when we log in? Now I mentioned that a lot of this was under the man page for bash. And if we look under man bash, and go under invocation, come back a little bit, you can see here uh, a big breakdown of what happens when we log in. Because bash can be run in a couple different ways. It can be run as an interpreter to interpret a set of files or a set of uh, commands in a script. Uh, it can be used to run different commands at certain times. Uh, think about something like cron. When cron runs, it launches a bash shell to run a couple of different commands. Uh, and so, we have different different things get loaded up depending on how Bash was started. And for most of us, and especially in this presentation, we're looking at Bash as a, a login shell. And so what that means is that as a login shell, it loads specific files whenever it gets started up. Okay. Now I'm, I'm breaking this down because I think it's good to understand that nothing in this realm is is magic. There, even though sometimes it may seem like it, there are always there's always a reason. There's always a a setup for why. It, something is a certain way. And so this is all come up to, to say that when bash is started, it goes through and loads up these files in particular order. And so if we look at them very quickly here, Etsy profile, right, we're we'll going to see some of the things that get started up, get loaded into bash, right? So we see here maybe that our host name variable gets set or that our history size is set, okay? Uh, things like your UMask, right? So how, what your default permissions all get set up from Etsy profile. From there, it might load something to see uh, maybe a bash profile, local profiles, right? So when you see Etsy profile loads this, when you see this, this tilde right here, it's saying load it from my home directory, right? My current home directory. So 
if we wanted to expand upon what the defaults are for, for us internally, for our personally, uh, our user account, we can go to do so and add it here uh, within a bash profile, a bash login, or a dot profile as well. You might also see a, a dot bash RC file, which can get loaded, which is loaded as well as part of the invocation process. So moving on to environment variables. So a way to look at our environment here is, actually step back, take a step back here. So the print env command, what it's gonna do is gonna display uh, our environment variables for us. Uh, and so when bash loads up and loads those files, a lot of variables get loaded in that we can use in our one-liners or our scripts. Uh, and some of these are just a lot of defaults that bash loads for itself. So real quick, an example of print env. So if you do print env, we get to see a lot of the, uh, the default variables that get set up. So uh, if you look here, we see that ls colors, it says, hey, this is the way uh, our screens will get colored up if we have that turned on. We'll have uh, the present working directory, right? We have the home directory for the user and just, uh, some other kind of interesting things like your login name, history size. We saw that get set in the Etsy profile. So again, it's kind of beginning to show you where things can get set up or how they get set up as you log in. Okay, all, all this happens behind the scenes, uh, but I think it's nice to know, hey, this is where it comes from. Okay, and I can echo path or echo hist size, right? So uh, here in this, I'm um, showing you all is using the echo command to display the contents of a variable. When we have, a, we're looking at a variable, we prepend it with a dollar sign, right? So dollar sign path or dollar sign history size, his size, to see what that that variable looks like. Okay. Oops. All right. So now it's looking at setting and exporting variables. We begin to see a lot of different things as we uh, try to expand upon our knowledge or expand upon our, our usability. One thing we're going to want to be able to work with are variables to set data for, for certain variables. So the first thing here, it's fairly easy to set a variable on the command line. Let's say we're gonna say that uh, cuss or my var equals hello world, okay? And it's simple to call that variable and say my var hello world, very simple. Now, if I went into a script and if I wanted to use this variable within a script, it wouldn't be available because it's local to this, this session or this terminal. If I do a print env and maybe grep for my variable, we wouldn't find it there, that makes sense. So now I'll go ahead and do an export my variable, my var. And I come back to print env, now we see it there. So, so what this means is that this variable now has been exported out to a, a more low or larger scope. And I can begin to use it within within scripts and kind of have that variable set for myself. So let's take a look at that, what that looks like. So I have a simple script here. If I go to, ah, here we go. Uh, this test script here. So custom var equals custom var. Let's click clear this out a little bit. And let's say that echo my variable. And if I say bash test script, we'll see that hello world comes out. Add upon this a little more here and say my variable equals and then we have that. Okay. Test script. My variable equals hello world. So let's expand upon this a little bit here. So we can kind of see the difference when we have a set of variable and when we export a variable for use in other areas. So if I just set another variable and say set var2 equals how are you? Very simple. Oh, sorry. I'm going to take the set off. We don't need that set there. We just need var2. And notice also that we don't have any spaces between the equal signs and the rest of the right hand side of the variable. We do that here, okay, echo var2, sorry, if we echo thousand var2, we have how are you. If I go into my script, my test script here, and say echo, let's 
see here, var2 equals var2. And save that. Run our test script, bash test script. We see there's no value there for var2. But now if I export var2 and write again, now we see that var2 is available to us within the script. So that can be helpful when you have to write custom scripts or set some custom data and be able to set the variable and then use it within your scripts. Okay. We can even take that a step further back and say that if we had something we always want set up, we might set that variable within Etsy profile or within a bash RC file within our home directory. So again, we're starting to build over that. How can we build our defaults? How can we get our, our, our environment set up in a way that we, is useful to us, right? All right, so we did the example for export. These, some of these slides are just reminders for me to jump back to a terminal and, and do a demo or do kind of show what we're trying to talk about. So the next thing I want to talk about here are bash built-ins. And so these are a set of commands that are built into bash, right? So there is no other need to, I guess, step back a little bit. Traditionally, when we execute a command from bash, it does a thing called forking. Essentially, it creates a copy of that and launches a command in the, in the background, the foreground, depending on how it's set up, and, and Bash continues to run. So, but these commands are set up so that they are built within Bash itself, so there's no need to execute a new command. Uh, this has come in handy, or this concept has come in handy a couple times in the past. And it's very rare, but when a system maybe has too many processes and it can no longer create more PIDs, having something like the kill command be a Bash built-in or go not having to start a new PID is helpful. Okay, and so let's take a look at this. Uh, way we can kind of figure out what some of the bash built-ins are by using the type command. And so let's take a look at what that looks like. So if I'm here, I say type bash. This is a bash is a command, right? So type either which bash. All right, so type bash, user bin bash is user bin bash. Let's say, let's do a uh, type kill. Let's say kill is a bell shell, kill, kill is a shell built in. Okay. Now let's do a man type. And if I do man type, this actually gives me to the man page for bash built ins. And you can see here at the top of the screen, all the different commands that are built into bash. Okay. So alias, if we wanted to create an alias, if we wanted to bind a a directory to a mount point, right? Uh, if you wanted to see a few things here, export as we used earlier is another bash built in, right? So jobs, kill, let, uh, let, we'll see later on for arithmetic evaluation. That's right, so a couple different things here that all, again, all become bash built ins. Okay, and like I said, I won't go over the whole page here, but there are these are the commands that are available to us without having to spin up a new PID or new process ID. So a checkpoint slide. I like these slides to essentially make sure we're all on the same page of how far we've come. So, so far in this presentation, we've covered a bit of breath work. So box breathing, right? So inhaling, holding, exhaling, holding, all for an equal amount of seconds. So in this case, four seconds. We covered what happens when you log in. Simply all the things that get started up when you log onto a system via SSH or via a, ter a terminal. Uh, we talked about setting and exporting uh, bash variables. Again, this is one of the building blocks of being able to harness the power of creating one-liners or creating scripts that can automate your tasks for you. And then last, we talked about bash built-ins. Again, a series of commands that are just built into bash, there for you, ready to use. Um, you can always count on them being there. Now I want to talk about IO redirection. And so this is one of the uh, fundamental concepts that we talk about in that begin to really help us build our, our scripting, our one-liners, right? Um, so the concept here is that every system, or every command, sorry, has a, a standard in, a standard out, and a standard error. And we'll kind of dig into what that looks like here. Uh, and, and when we understand this concept, then we begin to take the, 
the output of one command and either redirect it to a file or, uh, as we'll see later on here, pipe it into the input of another command. So, talking about uh, redirecting output to a file. So, usually when we type a command, the output, or standard out, as you see here, uh, goes to a terminal. And so, we can redirect that output to either a file where we, we create a new file and put it there, or we append to a new file or to a file uh, and not overwrite the whole thing with the double brackets. Okay, so take a look at that here real quick. Again, just a very simple demo. I might say that I might uh, cat Etsy uh, password, right? And we have some information here. But maybe I want this output to be saved into a file for later use. So maybe I'll say cat Etsy password and then redirect it to uh, temp password file. And we see here that we have a new file, right? And cat temp, temp password file. Okay, simple redirection. Uh, sometimes we can we can build upon this if we wanted to uh, have a number of scripts that begin to uh, sort that data, if you will. And so, real quick here, also, if I'd say maybe echo hello, the output we get when I hit enter, right? The output comes to standard out. If I say echo hello, and I use a single bracket to say temp password file, cut that out, we've overwritten that file. Now, uh, so if we want to do double brackets, that would append the file, append to the file. So uh, let's see here, echo line two, and I'm going to append with double brackets to temp password file. Cat that out. And we see here that we've appended to that file. Uh, this can be, understanding this and, and, and using single brackets versus double brackets can be uh, the difference between overwriting a file that you absolutely need or just appending to a file that uh, you want to keep adding to. So. Okay, so let's take a look at last and tack you know, on the command line here. So I do last pipe to tack, okay? We get something that that this output here, we're going to get a last being the, the uh, sorry, the last uh, successful logins. And something to note, note here, uh, last B is the uh, last bad logins or failed logins. So it's kind of nice to know. Um, just a quick little bit of information there as well. So back to our example here, last. So last here gives us the last successful logins, where they're from. Um, things like that, but it, it begins. Uh, it gives you in an order where the uh, the most recent is up is up top. Okay, uh, maybe I'll do this here. I'll do a last and pipe the tack again, and then we see here that now the most recent is at the bottom. Now, again, for your personal usage uh, of this, this these commands, your your usage may vary on what you want to do with it. So let's break this down a little further. If I look at tack, so tack is just cat backwards. So if I cat a file, I get, you know, line one, two, three, four, five. Um, so I do cat and say one, two, three, four. See, so it begins to just output those lines for me. I'm gonna get, cancel that out. If I do tack, if I do here one, two, three, four, five, and then close it out, I get five, four, three, two, one. Again, print it out backwards. Just to give you an idea of how the two commands work independently. Now, so when I say last, right, remember I talked about earlier like standard out, standard in, standard out, standard error. When I do last, standard out goes to the screen usually. And so last gets printed to standard out. When I do last pipe, tech, right, so now I'm saying I want the output of standard out. So I want the output of standard uh, out so the command to go to the input standard in of tech the next file and that's how pipes connect two commands together and again that's really going to be one of the prime things that help you build your your one-liners or your uh, scripts later on so uh, again another checkpoint slide make sure we're all on the the same slide same page here 
Uh, we've talked about the IO redirection, so taking the idea of standard in, standard out, standard error, and, and what that means. And then also redirecting that to a file. Uh, so using these uh, angle brackets, angle brackets. So uh, one of them would again go ahead and overwrite a file, and then two of them is going to append to a file. And then lastly, we talked about pipes again, connecting the output of one command into the input of another. Jumping into our bash scripting portion of this tutorial, this presentation. So uh, looking at our first, first bash script, uh, we'll break down the shebang line. This is the first line you'll see on a lot of, of scripts uh, on the system. It essentially tells the system how to interpret the following commands. We'll break that down a little bit. We'll talk about making a script executable and making it more available in your path. And then we'll talk about some bash special variables that are available to us to uh, make things a little easier as we begin to write our scripts out. So the whole shebang, right? So taken from putting together uh, the pound symbol or sharp if you come from music and the bang or the exclamation point, uh, this is kind of that, that, that word shebang kind of comes from a, a joining of those two words. And essentially what you need to know about that is that it tells the system how to interpret the following script or the following commands. Uh, one common thing you might see is, like you see here on the thing, uh, pound, bang, uh, bin, bash. So it tells us, hey, the following commands, the following things in this file should be interpreted from a bash shell or a bash prompt. Uh, you might see also maybe Perl, right? So uh, bin Perl, that's telling the system, hey, run this through Perl as its interpreter. So it kind of gives you an idea of uh, how the file's interpreted or what happens at the very beginning of the file. Most, uh, most often in most scripting languages or most interpreted languages, uh, it is the pound symbol acts is, a, is the denotes a comment, so it's not necessarily interpreted. It's not executed by the system. It's kind of interpreted. Say, hey, this is what we're running the the script through. Okay. So the next step here is making those scripts executable. So earlier in the presentation, you saw that we maybe did something like bash and test the script. Okay. Now let's create a new script file, kind of a new file for us. So it might say vi new script.sh. And really the .sh is just for, uh, just to know what we're calling, to know what it is. It really has no bearing on the file itself. It doesn't even need it if you didn't want to have it. So, and we'll put our shipping in here in bash. Again, this tells us, hey, we're going to run this command or the following commands through bash. And maybe I'll say echo. Hello, world. Again, very simple. If I do bash and say new script, we get hello world. Okay, so this happens. This it's running the script. A bash run this script. Pretty simple. Now another way you might see a script run is by doing a dot slash. This tells me, hey, within this path, run new script. Okay. Mm, and it says permission denied. That's because the script is not executable. So we see here on our new script, look at permissions here, we don't see executable bit on there. Uh, notice from our test script earlier, we do see that. So a very simple shamad plus X on our new script. I'm sorry, shamad plus X, new script. And we can say new, now we can say, take a look here at our new script permissions. See that we have executable bits on there and we'll say new script. Okay, so now we can access it from dot slash, right? But let's say that we wanted to have this script available to us or the user without having to type in dot slash or anything like that. We would want, the term for that, we want to put this script in our path so that Bash knows where to look for it. And let's take a step back. Essentially, the path is just, our path uh, variable is just the series of directories that Bash looks for a command. So we echo path, we see here that we see here that 
when bash looks for a command, it's going to look through user local sbin, user local bin, user sbin, user bin, and then finally root bin. So this tells me that I can put a command or a script within root or slash root slash bin and have that available to me in my path. Let's, let's try that out now. So if I type here, I say new script, try to tap it out, I don't see it. But if I go ahead and move new script to root bin, now we'll see that new script shows up as an option for a tap complete within our, within our, our shell. Because again, bash searches that path for try to complete that name we're typing in. And now I can execute it without the dot slash, without having to execute bash and put the script there. So again, this can be helpful when we create our own scripts for our system and we wanna make sure that they're either available to everybody else or they're available to this user at all times at any place without having to type in the full path. Again, just make things a little bit easier. Now I wanna talk about some, some bash internal variables. And the, this is only a subset, a very small subset of all the variables that uh, could be available to you. Now, uh, I think these are some of the most interesting ones or the ones that are most useful. So the echo dollar sign question mark. Again, when we try to display the contents of a variable, we use a dollar, we prepend it, prepend it with a dollar sign and then uh, whatever variable or special character that might be to get the, the output of that. Uh, so echo dollar sign question mark is the exit code or the return value of the last command ran. This can be useful when you want to make a decision when based on whether or not the previous command was successful or not. Okay, uh, and we'll, as we get into our if statements here in a little bit, you'll see how that becomes more useful. Another one we might have is echo dollar sign dollar sign. Uh, this gives us the PID or the process ID of the, the script that we're running. So maybe that I look at my test script here and say it's been like echo dollar sign question mark and echo uh, two dollar signs, which will be again our process idea of the script. And then as we see here, test script. Again, the return code being zero, whatever, whatever command was run before that. So in this case, it would be that previous echo and the PID of the script itself. That last number uh, should be increasing constantly as system spins up processes and tears them down. And then lastly here, I think this is probably one of the most important ones when we talk about uh, writing scripts for ourselves is the parameters passed to a script are stored in these uh, dollar sign zero, dollar sign one, dollar sign two, et cetera, variables. So what that looks like on the, on the system here, if I were to say, let's edit our test script and say that echo, uh, the name of the command is dollar sign zero. So dollar sign zero is the first variable there. So it's usually the name of the command itself. And then let's say uh, echo, this is the first uh, argument or parameter. Dollar sign one. And so now let's try this, do a test script. And we're gonna say with um, parameter one. Okay, so now we see here, the last two lines here, the name of the command is test script. And then the first parameter is parameter one. Okay, again, essentially it's space delimited on the options up here. Again, as we begin to build our scripts, it's gonna become more more useful. On the command line in a one line like this, not so useful per se, but as we begin, begin to build our scripts, we'll see that a little more, a little more uh, powerful. So again, uh, just a really quick checkpoint slide to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, so far, uh, in addition to what we've covered in the past, we've covered uh, the shebang line or the command interpreter. So again, the very first part of a, a script here, that bin bash is, is known as the shebang. And then again, it's the way that the file will be interpreted. This says, hey, the following commands should be interpreted 
through through bin bash essentially talked about making a script executable and putting it into your path again that's super important if we want to make a script available to us uh, anywhere on the system not to have, not having to type in the full path of that file and then a couple of bash internal variables that can prove to be useful and you can do a, a quick google search for bash internal variables or bash built-in variables or even bash and then dollar sign question mark and get a list of all those different uh, built-in variables so uh, arithmetic operators arithmetic uh, operations so like most things uh, bash has the, the ability to do addition and subtraction you can increment and decrement uh, automatically by one or two whatever it might be a pretty pretty standard operations for for most scripting languages and it's pretty simple here as they have you can most of the things are pretty self-explanatory right so a plus sign you can do minus you can do multiplication or division and you actually have a whole list of them here under a, a, a va advanced bash scripting guide which you'll see here uh, a link to this will be uh, included towards the end of the of the presentation or at the end of the resources but if you search for advanced bash scripting guide you'll find that pretty easily so. so one of the big things when we talk about uh going through loops if we'll, talk, we'll do our next section if we one thing we want to need each, no, the one thing we need to know before that is how to uh increase or decrease the value that we want to to gauge against right so couple ways we could do that uh, we could encase it in two uh, two sets of brackets or we can say let and then uh, the uh, arithmetic operation we want to perform remember let being a bash built-in essentially evaluates that that uh, arithmetic statement so in this case here this is shorthand for essentially I plus equals or I equals I plus one or i equals i plus two, right, whatever. Um, the reverse also true, if you had a minus minus here, it would be uh, decrementing that, or decreasing that that number. So i minus minus essentially is shorthand for i equals i minus one. Again, this will become more powerful within our loops. But taking a look here under our directory, go to scripts, bash arithmetic. So, here I have a couple of examples in how this works out. And we see here that uh, i is equal to one, so we're setting a variable. The semicolon just says, hey, that's the end of that line. And we're just, for e e make it easier to read, we're putting all this on one line here. Then we're gonna echo out i equals to the value of i. And then just a comment here saying, hey, set i equals to one. Now, this next line here, if we just had i plus equals two, Again, we set a variable with i equals one. So we try to do it with i plus equals two. What we'll get here is not so much the numeric uh, addition of one plus two, right? So in this case, it would be three. We get a, almost like a string addition so that it appends the character two uh, to the numbers, making it 12, uh, which if you're just starting out, if you're just beginning to work with numbers or adding subtracting in a bash script can be very troublesome so i want to highlight it here uh, so echo i equals i add two to i right so uh, again this will be a long form to what we usually think is a long form for i equals i plus two in this case here it becomes i equals 12. if we do that again just for examples here i plus equals one again we'll have i equals 121. Again, if you're just starting out, this could be really uh, just defeating or, or troublesome to troubleshoot, right? Now, looking here earlier, or we said earlier, right, uh, let. So let, now we're evaluating a rhythmic operation. So we say let i plus equals two, then then we're actually incrementing the, uh, the value of i by two, in, in this case, 123. And then we see here, the uh, another way to do that would be to say in the, in the double brackets or double, double braces uh, I plus plus or plus plus I now this order here doesn't make a lot of difference when we are putting it in a single line like this 
But when we talk about loops, it does make a difference, right? Uh, when we go through a loop, it says, hey, uh, I want you to evaluate the value of i for this loop, and then after the loop is done, increase it by one. And sorry, this one here is that it take the i value of i, increase it by one after the operation. This one here says before the operation, increase the value of, of i. Now, usually you're going to see it in, in this way here, I++, plus plus, but I'm highlighting this just so if you see it later on, you know, hey, I've seen this before. I can't, I can't remember what that means. Let me go look it up again. Simple as that. So talking about functions, okay? Uh, so functions become a way to run through a set of commands that can be grouped together or, uh, and reused within, it, within a, a script, which is quite nice. And they're very, they're called very simply here. We have the uh, keyword function, the name of the function, and then we increase the case, the uh, commands in the curly bracket. So if you have the function, you might have command one, command two, and it goes from there. So functions uh, are super powerful, but also very easy to set up, which, which is nice. Now talk about control statements. Okay, I think we're back now. Uh, one of the fun things about recording this ahead of time is that sometimes the light you're using can go out and you have the opportunity to stop and, you know, get set up again. So back to our presentation, uh, talking about control statements. So uh, there are a couple ways that, I mean, this is pretty common for a lot of scripting languages, uh, Bash included in that. And so we're gonna talk about an if loop, a for loop, a while loop, and, and then switch statements. And we'll begin to look at our script and build a script out to, around these things. So for loops, for loops are pretty useful, I mean, pretty useful in any scripting language, but when we want to execute a, a series of commands an exact number of times, all right? So we say that I want to execute this command 10 times. A for loop is great for that. Um, so the way we set up a for loop in bash is, is simple. For var, var in sequence. So sequence can be, uh, a series of numbers, it can be the command sequence, it can be a series of, of strings, or a series of, of strings. And for that part, we say do command one, two, and three, and then we say done, right? So do command one, command two, command three, and, and then done, right? So let's take a look at what that looks like as an example. So we're gonna take a look at a, a very first version of a, a box breeding script. And I have that written out, it's part of the GitHub repo, so you can see it there. Uh, you can copy and paste it. You can type it out uh, side by side. Uh, I prefer to, uh, if I'm doing this for the first time, type it out. And if I have the script, that way it becomes a little more tactile. I kind of have a little more time to study each of the lines and understand what they're doing. But for this presentation, I'm just going to bring the script up that's already written and kind of go through it line by line so we know what's going on. If you'll remember that the uh, box breathing was a, a simple four-step process of, of alternating your, your inhales, holding, exhales, and then holding again for, for a number of seconds. So let's take a look at box breathing version one. Now it's a very simple script here. Again, we take a look at line by line here. We see here actually set uh, line number maybe? There we go, set number. Uh, sometimes I forget. Uh, so looking at line number one, right? We have our interpreter, bin bash. Now here we're setting two variables up. We're setting up a, a variable for the number of rounds that we're gonna do box breathing for, and a count for the number of seconds we're going to uh, hold or inhale, exhale. And actually, I'm gonna go in here and add a couple things. I'm gonna add a comment that says, uh, the number of rounds we are going to through and then a comment here and say how long we will hold each section. Okay. Now again here we have echo starting box breathing for X number of rounds. In this case here uh, it's going to be whatever. Remember we saw this earlier. Dollar sign one is the uh, the uh, essentially the second parameter we pass to the script or the first parameter that's passed to the script. Uh, dollar sign zero being the script name itself. So here we go. 
um, x, so we're going to have four loops, x, x equals one, and we say that for i in sequence rounds. So remember this, this, this notation here says I want to, uh, I want the output of the sequence command for that, that variable there. And somehow turning the screensaver on is, is not the easiest, uh, easiest thing to not do. I'm sorry about that. So for i in uh, sequence rounds. Real quick, let's step out of this file here and just show you what that looks like. So if I do a sequence command and say sequence uh, four, right? One, two, three, four. If I do a sequence uh, 10, right? I do a sequence two, 10, one, or let's say two, not bad, uh, two, 10, right? So it goes from two to 10. Uh, if we say sequence uh, one to five, right? So again, we just generate a sequence of numbers, uh, two man sequence here. Uh, that's what I'm looking for here. The first, the increment, and the last. So let's say we do sequence one, two, 10. So we hear every other, every other number, right? So one, three, five, seven, nine, go towards uh, 50, if you will, right? Again, just generate a sequence of numbers. Start at zero. There we go. So again, it's just, it's just a way to generate a, a series of numbers. So take a look at our script again. See vi box breathing. Yeah, yeah, Bob. Vi box breathing version one. Just like a live demo, right? Even though it's pre-recorded, we get a chance to see some typos and realize that nobody can really type when they're being watched. In this case here. Uh, so for this this sequence here, we're going to go for i in sequence rounds. We know that this is going to generate uh, a list of of numbers one through four. So we're going to do uh, for each step, we're going to do that. We're going to do the following commands, right? So echo round whatever x this is. And actually, this should actually be for i in sequence. This is going to be i. A little typo there. And this will all get pushed to the the most updated version of the Git repo. So for i in, I don't even need this either. So for i in sequence, so for i in one through four, echo round, right, would be one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna inhale for count seconds, right? So count being, count being in this case four. We could change this to fit whatever fits our breath, right? Uh, and a very simple, Inhale, sleep. We're going to sleep for the same uh, count seconds, right? So it's going to be a very, very simple script here. We're going to hold, count, exhale, count, uh, and then come down here and say x equals x plus one. We very easily could also do, uh, as we saw earlier, x plus plus as well. Okay. So let's see what the script looks like when we run it. Box breathing version one. Okay. So notice here that because we didn't have a parameter, we have an error. And actually the error comes from the sequence command. So let's go ahead and add in a number here and we'll say two rounds. I will just do one round first, just so we can see what it looks like. Sorry, a box breathing for one round. Uh, round one, inhale for four, hold for four, exhale for four seconds, and then hold for four seconds again. Okay, um, and you'll notice here also that that last part there, we could have it do a little bit more, but again, this is this is the first version of the script, uh, and so if we look at that again, again, just highlighting here, this is what a for loop looks like. Again, we we want to execute a a set of code a exact number of times, then we'll use a for loop. Okay. So let's save that and jump back to our presentation here. So if loops, so if loops, it says, hey, we have a decision to be made. And so there is some sort of test we need to do. If greater than, if X is greater than 10, if true, if false, right? Um, we do some things like some fun things, like if a file exists or if the string is zero or empty, right? So the way we set up an if is we have an if statement. If square brackets, some test. Notice the spacing here 
in this line. That spacing is important. Uh, if you were to have no spacing in there, you'd get an error, and it can also be difficult to troubleshoot that error if, uh, if it's simple as just a space. You might look at it, say it looks good, and move on. Uh, but then we have a, a then statement. So if something, if this is true, if this is false, uh, then run some commands. And we close out the if statement because notice we don't have any curly brackets or curly braces. Uh, then we close out the if statement with the uh, reverse, so fi. And we'll notice this uh, again when we look at the case statement. That's just its reverse of that 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 selector word. So if in this case uh, closed out closed by uh, fi. Let's see what an example looks like of that. So an example loop here would be if dash z dollar sign one. So we'll take a look at what that dollar sign or that dash z means a little more in depth. But essentially that says if the first parameter is empty. So if I didn't pass a first parameter, then echo out a usage statement. Uh, so this is very common for a lot of scripts to say, I need parameters. If I don't get them, go ahead and print a message saying, I need this, this parameter. So if you hear f, if dash z dollar sign one. So there's a test here and saying the test is, is dollar sign one an empty string? Did I get a parameter? Then, then our command echo uh, use statement dollar sign zero. Again, dollar sign zero being the name of the command. Uh, usually here, people might put in the name of the command as they know it. But at times, commands can get alias, commands can get symlinked, and have maybe a slightly different name than what you intended it. So using, using dollar sign zero here makes it a little more uh, practical, a little more approachable to any situation. Closing it out with the fi. So some of these other test operators that we can use here are, again, dash z says, hey, true if the string uh, is, is a, sorry, look at my, look at my typo here. Uh, dash z is string, true if the length of the string is zero. Uh, dash a is, is, does a file exist? So this is the typo here that I will fix, uh, but since a is, is, does a string exist? And then we also have the number of, of comparison operators. So it's equal, not equal, less than, greater than. And if you click on the link here or look for a bash beginner's guide, you'll see a list of all the different test conditions we have here. All right, so we see here a dash a file is true if the file exists, okay? Uh, and kind of going through here, you get to see a lot of different examples. So again, th this resource will have, there's a link at the end of the presentation, a really great resource to go through and extend your learning or come, come back and reference whenever you're writing a script for yourself. Okay, so it's a little while loops. So a while loop, uh, if we look at a for loop, a for loop executes a, a series of commands or code for an exact number of times. A while loop will will execute the commands while a certain condition is true. So in this case here, if we look at our example, if we set in a variable to i equals zero, and we say while while uh, the variable i, right, so zero, is less than or less than equal to, we can change that up, uh, four. Do the following command. Do command one, two, three, et cetera, four. And we finished up with done. So again, for our, for our for loops and our while loops, the keywords after are do the following and then done. No, oh, sorry, and then done. And the difference here is that a while loop will run for as many times as that condition is true. So a kind of thing to note here is that when you know exactly how many times you want something to run, use a for loop. If you're unsure, how many times you'll want it to run, but you know it's a certain uh, test condition, you can say, I want it to run until, or I want it to run while, then use a while loop, while loop. It's like I'm saying that funny, but moving on. Taking a look at box breathing script version two. So taking a look at some of the things that we just covered and applying them to our uh, version two of our script. Breathing V2. Okay, so this looks a little bit different, and we've had a few things that we'll talk about here that can be kind of fun. 
So again, we have our interpreter, bin bash or shebang. We have rounds, count, echo. So here also, I forgot to say that we also talk about functions for a slight bit, and this is what a function might look like uh, when we declare a function and when we call a function within our file. So the first thing we're doing here is declaring a function calling a uh, box side, right? So essentially referencing what side we're on of that breathing, if we talk about box breathing. So while, or sorry, uh, y equals one. So while y is less than or equal to count. So y, while y is less than or equal to four, do the following. I want you to echo dash n e, and we'll see what this means here. So this line here, I'm setting it up so that it's a little bit more uh, visually appealing. Uh, one of the things I was trying to write these scripts out is that the constant scrolling of the line may not give the best experience. So we're changing that up, and we'll see what that looks like in the script. We'll, we'll go through each line, we'll go through each line here. I'll run the script, and then we'll come back to the file so we can kind of again see what that looks like. So uh, echo dash any dollar sign one again dollar sign one being uh, the uh, so in this case here, dollar sign one is local to this function. Okay, so this might be a little confusing at times. I'll break it down a little bit. Uh, I'll edit the file and break it down. So up here we say rounds equals dollar sign one. Now these are the parameters that were put into the script from the command line. And I'll highlight that when we actually run the command. But if we come to the function here, this dollar sign one references down here the parameters we give the function, okay? So keep that in mind. And, I, I, and honestly, in best practice, it might be that in the function we say that um, the variable called action equals dollar sign one, and then come down here and say action would be, uh, so echo the action, right? Inhale, hold, exhale, uh, for a count of y. So y being uh, actually, yeah. So y being the uh, in this case one, and then we're going to sleep for 1.5 seconds. In, in this case here, uh, the I'm not doing exactly a count of one second because as as you would do this, as you guide yourself through this, as you guide, uh, as you look at your screen, it seems it's just a better flow for the inhales, one, two, three, four. So I played with that number a little bit. Feel free to play with that number as well and what works for you. Uh, part of this is that you'll have these scripts, you can play with them, uh, change the numbers around, change the values around and see what happens. And then coming down here, we have the incrementing, right? So y equals y plus one. And then done, right? So then, uh, let's see here. Okay, so we have echo step in here, uh, dollar sign one for a count of four. Okay. Actually, I don't think, don't think we need that line. I'm gonna go ahead and comment that out. I don't think it's gonna affect it. So coming down into this main section here, okay? Uh, so we notice here that our function is here and here, right? So actually set number. So line seven and line 17 is where our function is. So now in this place here, this is the main part of our of our script, right? So main, and we're calling it main just for, for labeling. The comment here doesn't really make a difference. But we say, hey, as the script gets started up, we say um, x equals one, and then while x is less than or equal to rounds, rounds being the rounds passed in, passed in from the command line, do the following. Now, uh, you'll see some new things here, t put clear and t put C and Viz. So these two here, uh, what you want to know about them is that it's going to clear our screen, turn our cursor invisible, and create more of a, a, a blank space for us to have our commands on the screen. Uh, T put is just for a terminal put. It's a way to change certain variables, certain parameters of your terminal if they're available to you. So you can get more information by doing man T put, something like that. So we're gonna echo the round we're on, and then we're gonna call the function box side here with the parameter of inhale. So if we take a look at our, our function here, that dollar sign one is gonna be replaced by inhale. If we have the value of inhale, and our action here is what's gonna get printed on this line. And we'll see this in action here in a little bit. 
uh, this echo dash ne. So this ne portion, this you see here, uh, you'll see a couple times here dash ne dash ne slash r. It essentially, is I'm wanting to write and print on the same line. So it's going to clear out the line by doing this here. It's going to clear out the line uh, that inhale and then print hold on that same line. Okay. Now again, we'll see what this looks like in the script. Going through the whole script done, and then you're done. Uh, echo and you're done. And then T put C norm. So bringing that cursor back to normal, whatever that might be for the, for the settings. So running box breathing version two, and we're gonna run it for uh, two rounds. We should do for one round again, actually. So notice how the screen uh, cleared itself. Our cursor is now invisible, and we actually have a more animation here, right? So hold for a count of two, three, four. Exhale for a count of one, two, three, four. Um, and so you get the last part of the hold there, and then it'll say you're done. The script's done. So kind of nice. Uh, if I wanted to maybe. Add a little more, I might say T put C norm and then T put clear, right? To kind of clear the whole screen out again if I wanted to. So again, taking a look here at this. Um, highlight again a couple things. That our box size is called in multiple times, right? But we only have to type it in for, for each. In our previous script, when we had to, we wanted to do multiple rounds, we have a loop for that. Here, we can actually put all this different code and uh, have it sectioned away so that we only have to change it once within our function or within our script if we want to change anything, right? Um, so I could change this to maybe 1.3 seconds or 1.6 seconds, depending on what would fit your experience and your maybe your breath work. Uh, let's actually write that this line not needed, close that out. And again, these scripts, again, are available within the, the GitHub repository to play with, to edit, things like that. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so again, also highlighting this echo dash any one more time, but that's going to allow us to kind of get that animation feel uh, or that the line clearing out and then having it uh, overwritten. Okay. So close that. Okay, so now taking a look at a case statement or, or another language you might call it a switch statement. And while we while we could nest certain if statements, right? So if statement, then if, then, um, we could do things like that. A case statement sometimes makes things a little cleaner. And so the way we set up a case statement within bash is, is the following. We have the first uh, line, so case, variable, in, and we have certain sections. So we have these these next sections where we have a, a specific word or a number or a regex right, or expression that's going to match. So if something matches, so if the word matches, it's going to have it's going to run the commands and is and is done or denoted that this this code is done by the double semicolons. Uh, usually, what I'll have is a catch-all, so star. So if anything matches, uh, if nothing else matches, then we'll run some default command. Uh, you might see this in a uh, old style init script where you would have the the command name uh, for example maybe HTTP start stop etc uh, those are usually written in a case statement within bash you have also again here uh, again this this code here would be for, for any kind of uh, situation catch-all and then the last line here is essentially case spelled backwards if we look at remember the if statement the way we closed an if block was then we typed in fi. In this case here, we type in esac, uh, case backwards to close out that case statement. So let's take a look at that, what that looks like as a whole. Right, um, let me see here. Yeah. So let's take a look at our, our script now again uh, for version three, which puts some more of these things together. So taking a look at VI box breathing version three, here we have a bit more. And actually for this one, um, 
I'm going to run the script first to see what it looks like. Box breathe in V3. I might say enter. So find a comfortable seat. Again, we're looking at more of an experience here. Ready. And then we're going to inhale for one, two, three, four. Hold for one, two, three, four. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Notice the, the number is counting down in that one. And we'll talk about how that we do that in the script. And hold for one, two, three, and four. That's it. Right? And it comes back to like try to have a little more experience around it. Ask yourself how do you feel? Do you feel centered? Do you feel more present? Things like that, kind of noticing those things. So let's take a look at what this script looks like uh, from what we've learned so far. Fox breathing version three. All right, so a couple things here. Uh, this looks a little bit more, maybe a little more daunting, but it's, it's really not. It's really just adding on a lot of the things that we've been working on building up to this point. Uh, I don't think there's anything in here that we haven't covered as part of this presentation. So something you could totally build on your own by just putting together the different blocks and pieces. And really it's what scripting or the bash scripting is about. It's putting together little pieces of code or commands to get things done, right? Automate some things. So uh, I even have some comments here because commenting in your presentation is super helpful, uh, or your presentation, I'm sorry, for your script is super helpful. And maybe not for anybody else, but if only just for future you. Watch out for future you because uh, today you are someone different than you're gonna be in the future. And that future you may not understand what previously was trying to do or trying to write. Uh, so comments are helpful. Uh, like I said, some people will say they're, you know, it's only for me, it's fine, but we changed our, 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 our perception and our concepts change. And so having comments to say, hey, this is what I was doing is very, very helpful. I can't stress it enough. So here we have some variables, right? So we have rounds, again, from our first kind of uh, instance here, rounds. We have count, right? So if, again, if we want to increase this or decrease this, the number of seconds we hold or inhale, exhale for. So come here, we have functions. So our function, I've, re I've renamed it to box breath. Uh, seem a little easier for me to do. It seemed like a little, little uh, made more sense to me at the time, right? I'm writing this. So here we see our first case statement, or switch statement. So case dollar sign one. Now remember that dollar sign one within this function is going to be whatever we pass the function. It's going to be the primary pass of the function. And here we see that if it, if dollar sign one equals exhale, we read that line. If dollar sign one equals exhale, y equals count. And then while y is greater than one, so this is where we're counting down. So y equals uh, four. The count four. I just literally point to my screen, but you can't see a screen here, uh, the screen capture. So count equals four, while y is greater than or equal to one. So uh, in my initial portion, or when I initially wrote the script, it had y is less than one, um, but really we wanna get all the way down to one, so while well, y is greater or greater than uh, one. So uh, we're gonna count down from four, three, two, one, Print that out. Notice that we're going to, again, still seeking for 1.5 seconds. Again, this number can change uh, depending on how it works best for you. And then we have our decrementing, or right, so our decrease number, y equals y minus one. So this gives us our countdown effect that you saw on the exhale. Now, notice in our example we had catch all. So really, I only want to count down for exhale. So that, that code's a little different. But for all other options, for inhales, for hold, y, I can't do the reverse, y equals one, while y is less than or equal to count, I get a number of seconds, and then we're going to increase that number, right? So uh, y equals y plus one, okay? Notice that for each of those, we have the double semicolons to note that that is the end of that section or that case closing the whole thing out with case backwards, E-S-A-C. Okay, coming down to section number, just sped up normally, but come line 28, we see here that that is number seven, or line seven, line 28, that is the extent of that function. Coming down here to the main. So here, I have some other things uh, we set up. I added in essentially a, a, a pseudo catch-all. So, 
if I just run the script without any parameters, I'm going to manually set a parameter of rounds to one. I could have just easily said, uh, sorry, this if statement here, just like an example, if dash z. So if dollar sign one is empty, then round equals one. I could have just easily said um, echo dollar sign zero requires one a parameter, a round parameter, uh, and then maybe said exit one, right? So we're an exit return code. Um, so we did something like that. Uh, let's take a look what that looks like. We did it real quick. Save that. Three. See, now we see here, box breathing script requires a uh, rounds parameter. So come back to our file. If I say, again, that's a total choice up to you. If you want your script to assume a certain value or to ask for a certain value, maybe I actually ask for a certain value, right? Um, we can do something like that as well. So that's a little bit more for a different session. Like the next step I'd be to say, uh, with this own parameter, ask for the parameter and say, hey, uh, what should I use for rounds? Okay. Uh, so now we have here, uh, again, T put clear. So we're clearing our screen. We're turning our cursor invisible. Uh, and then kind of a little more in the experience notion to say, we're going to start box breathing. We're going to kind of bring it in for a couple of rounds. Uh, and then some time between there to kind of get ready find a comfortable seat, have your feet on the floor, things like that. And then asking, asking the user if they're ready before even coming into uh, the whole process of going through the number of rounds. So in this last one here, we have a while loop to do X rounds. Okay. And then turning into C norm, or, or turn our cursor normal again. Uh, and that's kind of, that's it really. That, that, that's kind of taking what we've learned over the last couple of, of half hour, maybe an hour or so, and putting it together to say, this is what our script can look like. Again, all the things that in the presentation are our building blocks in the script. And take a look at that again, box breathing version three. And we'll say for just one round here. For one round here, click the screen, find a comfortable seat your feet on the floor. And again, this could be whatever you'd like it to say, right? Uh, the idea is maybe you take this and again, build it to your, to your own specs. And then hold. And hopefully uh, if this proves to be useful, you put it in your own path, right? So at the end of all this, we could say, well, I really like version three or run my own version. I might say that I can copy, or actually because, I doubt they'll do this, I'll copy box breathing version three to root bin box breath, or box breathing like that. And now I can do something like box breathing to uh, one round, and there we go. See, so, I'll cancel this out. What, what I did here was that by placing version three into a root bin, now this, uh, this script is available to me anywhere I'm at. I don't need to be in my scripts directory. I could be maybe in root, right? So here and do box breathing, it's available to me there. Uh, I think I have a few other scripts in there as well, but by placing it in that path, it becomes more available to me. Um, and we could do that to set it up for any user, right? So if, uh, we could do in maybe user bin or user local bin, they're a path that most users have. So you can install this for every user in your system. And whenever they need a little bit of time to step away, they can execute the script and have that labeled to them. Right? So it's a nice little touch. Okay. Now, going a little further here in debugging. So we've gotten to this point where we've written a script and the idea here is that you're gonna go out further and write more scripts, write your own scripts, uh, get a little more dicey with the things you're gonna use uh, and maybe not have everything laid out for you uh, ahead of time. Or you're curious about what's going on in the script. 
So there are a couple of ways we could go ahead and debug a script, and we'll show some of those right now. So a couple options we have. Uh, we could do uh, dash x, we could do execute bash, dash x, and then a script name. And then that will turn on uh, essentially tracing the commands. And what that means is, hey, before it runs commands, it's going to give you an output of what's going on. Uh, so you can see maybe variables, things like that. Uh, and then dash V would be for thing, as things get re uh, read into the file. So let's see what that looks like here. Oh, actually, there's my box reading script v3. So let's take a look here. Uh, let's go over to a home directory, and we'll say um, we'll say bash dash x test script. Okay, actually bash dash x test script. All right, so I'm doing the dot uh, slash because I'll make sure that I'm executing the the script in this directory. Okay. So notice here these lines. So these lines here are the ones that end up being what's executed. So you see the plus sign echo my var, echo my var2, etc. Uh, an idea of what's happening. If we want to get a little more uh, what's it as timer and then go to scripts. Let's take a look. We'll, we'll do the first one here. Let's do bash dash x and we'll say box breathing version one. Put in a rounds there. And now you can see what's actually happening. So you see here that the rounds was set to one, count was set to four. We echo our first line here, and then we see the resulting echo of that line. And then we begin to happen again, you see the what's happening in the script as the script gets run. Again, which can be very useful. If we did maybe a I know what's happening here. Actually, T put C null. There we go. I think one of my scripts didn't have that at the end. Let's see here. Oh, it does. Okay. Well, again, type in T put C norm, got my cursor back here. But let's take a look at this. Let's add in X V. So we get a bit more of that output. So again, if you wanted to turn all the output way up, you could do dash XV and see what's going on with that. What's coming in and what's going out. Uh, another way we could do debug some scripts is that VI, yeah, let's, do, let's do box breathing three. Let's that a little bit. Uh, I, at the very beginning, I could say dash XV here, or I could say set dash X to, uh, to turn the debugging on and set plus X to turn debugging off. Okay, so let's take a look, take a look at that here. Maybe over here, we'll say that, uh, again, these are some edits real quick. Uh, as an example, uh, echo turn debugging on set dash x, and then after the second hold, we'll say turn debugging off, and we'll do a plus x. Okay. And this is gonna, it's not going to look pretty at first, but we'll see what happens here. Box reading, version 3, which probably let's do for one second, one round. We'll see here oh, the output. Yeah, so we see here the output of what's going on in that loop. And we see here at the end turning debugging off. And then notice that after that, it doesn't output so much. So again, we, that's a way we can turn debugging on, turn debugging off. And it's really more helpful than trying to look at a script and coming down here and something we might all be doing sometimes is say maybe I'll say uh, echo 
x, right? So I kind of get a checkpoint in that script. Um, kind of a default way to debug, just print out variables wherever you think they're getting changed or getting, becoming something you don't want them to be. Uh, but again, doing a dash x or a plus x can really be helpful to turn it on or off. So a couple of resources for everything that uh, we've been working on here. Uh, the first one is the Git repository, where again, I'll have all the scripts that you see here. I'll add more to the content as the presentation grows, as it gets bigger, um, or as I get feedback, right? Any feedback you'll have would be amazing to, to, to receive. I'll update the slides, update the scripts, and, and turn into something that's gonna be, be useful for, for a lot of people, hopefully. Uh, Bash online. So let's take a quick search. There's a number of places online that will have uh, some sort of playground or uh, sandbox. And so in this case here, we're looking at uh, tutorialspoint.com. If I wanted to execute this, I might say execute. On the left hand side, we have our Bash script. Over here, we have our uh, Hello World. Uh, if I come back to look at our Bash script, if I just cat that out real quick. I'll copy and paste this into this as an example. All right, and then execute. We'll see here the apple on the right. So that's kind of nice if you just want to play with things, uh, maybe test something out, uh, but don't want to hop onto a terminal. You can have this thing bookmarked or something like that. Then. Uh, then the, the last two resources here are something that, again, uh, this presentation is, is curated from a lot of different resources, but a really good resource for, for both beginning and advanced people is going to be these two resources, the Bash Guide for Beginners from the Linux Documentation Project, and then the Advanced Bash Scripting Guide. And so this presentation is a combination of topics from both the beginners and the advanced. Uh, so a lot more information there you, you can see here. Okay, uh, now we have our script. Uh, let's go ahead and, and work through a few more rounds of, of box breathing. And in this case here, I'll let the script do the queuing instead of just me. So box breathing, I'll do it for three more rounds. Again, the idea here is after we've written the script, it's available to us uh, when we need to step away for a moment or just take a, take a literally just take a breath, right? Um, a lot of times when we're tackling a project or a problem and it seems like we're hitting a wall, stepping away, doing something different, uh, in this case, maybe taking some a time for, for a bit of breath work can really uh, change that perspective and open our eyes to new solutions. So uh, we'll close this out here with a, a bit more of box breathing. Again, uh, if you want to close your eyes and count your head, perfectly fine. Uh, it works just as well. Or if you want to try this script out, maybe you've been playing along with it or following along, uh, feel free to do that as well. So I'm gonna let this go for three rounds here in box breathing. And I invite you to, to do the practice with us, right? So sorry, I'm box, box breathing for, for three rounds here. I'm finding a comfortable seat. I'm ready. I'm inhaling. That's it. 
Uh, hopefully you feel a bit more present, a bit more grounded and ready for whatever next presentation is up on your schedule. So, closing this out here. Uh, talk to me if you have questions, suggestions, feedback, right? So this is pre-recorded. We're going to have a live Q&A after this. I'll be available to answer any questions. If, you're, if it's past the original presentation, feel free to email me. Alex.Waters at Rackspace.com. That is my employer. That's a principal engineer with our Linux, uh, Linux systems support teams, or systems, yeah, Linux systems engineers. Uh, find me on Twitter at Mr. Alex Waters if you care to reach out there. And if you're, whoever you're watching this, Reach out, let me know what you think. Uh, again, any feedback is greatly appreciated. It's the only way we get better is we, we learn from doing, teaching, and getting feedback on that. So thank you all very much. You know, it's been a pleasure for recording this, and I hope you all find it uh, helpful. Thank you. What's going on? So thank you uh, for being with me on the presentation. I know that there were a lot of issues with the uh, recording as far as resolution goes, and I've talked to the team here at the Open Source Summit, and we're going to try to get you a better resolution uh, video up on for to watch on demand. So I wanted to go ahead and go through a few of the questions that we have here still. I tried to answer as many of them as I could during the presentation. It was kind of nice to kind of do it while uh, the video is running. Uh, one question that I got here a couple times was, uh, what is set used for? And in the presentation, I said I used it as to turn on debugging or turn off debugging so with a set X or a set uh, plus X. And, and really what that does is that set as a whole allows us to change shell very well, the shell options. Let me see if you read here. OK. Um, the repo link I posted into the chat as well as part of the slides Let's see here. I'm going through a few more of them here. Okay, the question here, uh, when using sequence in the for loop, does it generate the list of numbers before all iterations or does it find the next number at the end of the, each iteration? Right, so it's good. It, the command itself generates that list of, of numbers. So that will get loaded into the, the loop itself. So looking at the context of the question, it would generate that list before all iterations. So the sequence would get generated, and then that would, get fed, that would be fed into the loop uh, for those iterations. So we have a question here. Why does let i++ uh, pipe echo return nothing uh, because so if when we look at a pipe right so a pipe connects the standard output of a command to standard in of a command and what we see here is let, let might not have anything going to standard out right if you were to type in let i plus plus on the command line or, or in a script by default nothing's coming out of that command Right, uh, you would use echo to see what the current value is, but by default, using let i plus plus doesn't send anything to standard out, so nothing gets sent into the standard in of, of echo. Right, you would use uh, echo dollar sign i to to uh, display the contents of of that value, right, of the of i variable. Oh, nice. So there's a comment here. I really enjoyed this. I've been writing scripts since 1989. Doing about the sequence command. Yeah, that's one of the benefits of like doing these. Uh, what may seem like uh, fundamental topics is that I, I feel like for for people who've been doing it for a long time, some new things may be introduced, uh, so that maybe you get a bit more value as well, right? Even though you've been doing it for a long time. So. Uh, I really like doing these these foundational, fundamental topics for, for specifically that reason. Um, I, I've heard very similar comments for other presentations where somebody's been doing this for, for many, many years, and one thing I showed them uh, changed the way they started to write scripts after that. So, looks like we're good. Uh, again, thank you all very, very much. I do appreciate uh, your patience with the screen and the presentation. Like I said, we're going to get a better version out there. Any other questions or anything you have, 
uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, the presentation or the slide deck has my contact information. Happy to hear from any and all of you. So thank you all very, very much.